put your stuff away, guys, for now. For a minute, please. Close it. Ten seconds. Quit it. Tube. Ten seconds. Is it going to make a difference? Okay. You just played for an, a half an hour. Turn it off. Thanks. Close it. Exit it. Go ahead and Evan, do it. Pull the trigger. Okay. Today what we're going to talk about in Scratch, have a look, is yesterday we, we talked about um, storing information into variables. Today we want to talk about, and it was mentioned yesterday, that you can get Scratch to make decisions based on if certain conditions are met. So today we'll talk about that. Uh, let's just do a basic example for now where we have the cat ask someone a question and then we'll test and see um, if we can get him to make a decision about what happens with uh, the information. So here's a good example where let's just say we'll ask someone their age. Okay, so to ask someone a question you could either use purple, right, and just say it, or you could actually use the ask command, which is better because it uh, brings up that input bubble, okay, right? Where you can actually type things in. And that's important to be able to get people to type in information. So let's say we ask, what is your age? Like that. And um, the variable that that's gonna get stored in is the answer key there, okay, this one here. So what we can do is check if it, uh, let's check if they're over 18. 18 or over, because then they'll be allowed to vote. So what you do is you go to the control commands, and the one we want to look at today is if, okay? And that's gonna allow us to check if a certain condition is met. Notice the shape inside of this, um, this if block. It is the six-sided shape. So what will fit in there is a bubble with six sides. The only... Um, there's only six bubbles here that have six sides to them. They're all in the green section under operators, and you can see that they're greater, less than, or equal to, like that. Okay. There's also three um, extra ones where there's an and, an or, and a not, and they also have the six-sided shape. So. We can get kind of complicated with the conditions we're checking. This condition we want to check is if uh, answer is ever bigger than 17. So I'm going to put answer in here. The bigger than sign is the one that, you know, it's the alligator's mouth that eats the whatever one is bigger. I don't know. If, I don't even think they teach that in elementary school anymore. I don't know if they do or not. Um, so. Whatever code we put inside of this little bubble will only run if the person types in an answer bigger than 17. So let's uh, say something like, <coughs> for instance, go out and vote. <coughs> like that. Now, if I run my code, he asks, what's your age? There's an input there. If I type 16, nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? It's because this condition was not true, okay? So it just skipped the, this code. It's a way to get the computer to, dis, to make choices, which is important when you're trying to manipulate data. So let me type in uh, the number 20. Now he says go out and vote, okay? That's pretty much all there is to how an if statement works. They get really complicated. <coughs> We're just going to keep building on what we learned in lab two. Let's go over one other situation here where we'll actually use this if command, but there's an else attached to it. And what the else does, so I'm going to just copy and paste all of that back in there, okay? But the else command. The one, the if with the else on it, allows me to run some code if this isn't true, if this condition is false. Okay, so it gives me just a little bit of an extra option to say, uh, you know, you can't vote yet. 
Your opinions don't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> you're getting roasted by the scratch cat if you're not 18 yet, okay? So let's see what he does. What is your age? If I write 20, he says go out and vote. If I run it again by clicking the green flag and say what is your age and I type 15, he says your you can't vote yet. Your opinions don't matter. Okay? You guys just got roasted by the scratch cat. You don't have to take that. So that is how that works. Have a look at lab three. It's going to ask you to do similar things to lab two, but now it's not only, because lab two, you're, you're asking math questions and getting them to answer them, but you weren't checking if they were getting it right. You were kind of saying, um, here's the answer. I hope you got it right kind of thing. But here you can actually check now to see uh, if they're, if they're, I think the first question says, ask them to type in a mark. And if it's over 50, you could say you passed the course. If it's below 50, you failed it. <laughs> Here's one where you can ask for two numbers and determine which one is larger. Okay. Here's one where you ask a simple math question and you check it to see if they got it right. So those are kind of lab they're a lot like Scratch Lab 2, but just a, one extra step of difficulty because you have to check the condition if, they're, if some condition is true or false, if something's being met. Okay, so work on that today. We'll uh, keep going with that. I'll post this on uh, YouTube if you need to look at it.